It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us this morning for our regular Theology of the Body Thursday segment is our Executive Director here at Redeemer Radio, Cindy Black. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Good morning. So... I think this is interesting. We've been talking about theology of the body for a long time. I forgot to go back and look at the the first time we did this because I realized we were talking about theology of the body last Advent. So it's been at least a year that we've been doing this. And in that time, a lot of times it comes up the idea of being self-gift and the generosity we've been talking about with Thanksgiving and stuff. But one thing I don't believe that we've really talked about much is the other end of that spectrum. If, if one is to give then there has to be somebody to receive. Absolutely. So the idea of theology of the body and how that fits in with receptivity. Right. And that's why for God to be love, he has to be a trinity because there has to be a receiver. Mm-hmm. Just like the image of God, the trinity has the Father, Son, and the love that flows between them, the Holy Spirit. Both the Father and the Son are givers and receivers. So the Father makes complete self-gift. The Son receives that and returns the love. And then the Father receives the love of the Son. And it's that exchange that is the Holy Spirit. So each of us, as being created in the image and likeness of God, are created for both. So we have focused a lot about how we can only find fulfillment in being self-gift. But as you pointed out, every act of self-gift needs a receiver. Mm -hmm. So we're created for that as well. And our receptivity really starts with our relationship with God. If we take it back to our first parents, God gave them, he made a gift of everything that they needed within creation in the garden. And Adam and Eve would have received that gift, and it was only when they decided to grasp at the one Mm. thing they had not received Mm -hmm. that we had the fall and the break with that communion with God. That's interesting, the difference between receiving and grasping. Mm -hmm. And that really comes down to our fundamental belief in who God is. If God is the giver of all good things, if he's going to provide everything that we need, we have only to receive it. Mm -hmm. We don't have to grasp at anything. So I think our culture often says, you know, if you want something, you have to go get it and take it for yourself. Yeah. The practice of being receptive really starts with our relationship with God in believing that he is going to give us all that we need when we need it. I think so oftentimes our receptivity or our wanting to grasp something is that we don't trust his timing either. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I haven't received this yet. I'm not content yet or I'm not this yet. So we instead think we need to grasp at things. So how do we balance that with not wanting to overstep our bounds, I guess, and take something that's not ours, if you will, versus almost a laziness of, I'm just going to wait for God's blessings to pour upon me. I'm not going to go out and work. I'll wait for God to just deliver money to my doorstep. Right. It's really important that we not confuse receptivity with passivity. Okay. And... Our Blessed Mother gives us a beautiful example of that in her fiat. When the angel appears to her, she actively says, be it done unto me according to your word. Hmm. She receives and then she responds with a gift of self. She allows the Holy Spirit to indwell in her very being and offers herself physically and spiritually for God's plan. So it's, It's being receptive, but not passive. So, receptivity is an action. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, maybe if we look at like the example of a child and parent. Mm -hmm. If a child wants a glass of water, they can't necessarily give it themselves, get up and get it themselves if they're very small. Mm -hmm. So they have to trust that the parent 
is going to, but they have to receive it from the parent. Mm -hmm. They can't just not do anything. Otherwise, it's they're not going to open their mouth. It's not going to be swallowed. Yeah. And it's not going to do what it needs to do. So they, there has to be this participation in receiving the gift. And it probably depends on the gifts that you've been given right. and using those. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if the kid is old enough to be able to pick up the glass, then they're expected to do that. Mm -hmm. If the kid is old enough to get the water themselves, then they're expected to do that maybe. And what I'm kind of curious is, do you think that this uh, self-gift and receptivity would be like a same ratio from person to person? Or as we would recognize that different people have different gifts for, say, intelligence, for example, you wouldn't expect two people to have the same intellectual skill and be able to do that the same. Would some people be more gifted in the self-gift area and other people's be more gifted or have more of a need to be the receiver or and we could maybe see this financially if we want to keep with this example that the the wealthy are more able to and called to be of self-gift and those that are more financially strapped or in more need are more the receivers or would they still be called to give maybe in a different way and would those with finances still be called to receive, but maybe in a different way, not financially. Right. Absolutely. And I think that in our culture, we tend to see the being able to give material things as the higher position to be in. But actually, Jesus himself identified himself with that, the person receiving material things. Hmm. I was hungry and you gave me food. Right. I was thirsty. So it's actually in that case of material things, the receiver gives the giver the opportunity to not be attached to those material things. So actually that gift is greater than just receiving material things. Does that hmm. make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's really beautiful. Also I think we struggle with receiving things because we do see the giver as more in a position of power. Whereas when we are not receptive, we deprive others of their dignity to be givers. Right. So that's something that as I've worked in ministry and, you know, people can have good intentions and want to do the work themselves and think, well, I'm going to be self-gift and I'm going to do this, 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 and this. Whereas if you invite others to help you and work alongside you, you allow them to be givers as well. Yeah. We're talking with Cindy Black here for Theology About a Thursday about being receptive and being open to receiving the self-gift that others might be wanting to share, uh, but also receiving what God has to give to us and the difference between receiving and taking or grasping something that maybe isn't our, our gift. What are some other examples or things that we should be considered regarding receptivity? Well, as I was thinking about talking about this, I was thinking about my own prayer life and how I tend to be the most receptive to God when I am before the Blessed Sacrament. I don't know why that I, I need to ponder that some more, but it see the times that I recall in my life really being open and receptive in an active way, not just passive, is when I go before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament because I feel like I can physically offer myself to Him. Like I'm physically there so He can spiritually fill me because He's physically present as well. And I know it also helps me in prayer oftentimes to actually open my hands like I'm ready to receive something because then I, it's not just this passive going about my business and thinking, you know, God's just going to pour these things. I have to give him permission and I have to be open. So sometimes physically expressing that with my body, but with opening my hands or even in desperation, sometimes reaching up or even looking up shows a receptivity on my part. The other amazing thing, and we've talked about how our theology really goes along with science and our body makeup, is that 
when we are receptive, it actually reduces our stress. So when we experience stress, it's because we're living in a state of reaction rather than receptivity. Hmm. And when we are receptive to God and others, we receive like there's that strong connection with God and prayer and our loved ones actually produces calming chemicals like oxytocin that huh. that help to relieve that stress. So this receptivity is good for us, just like giving, yeah. being self-gift is being who we were created to be. So it's a beautiful way that God created us uh, and makes everything work for his good. Because we hear this a lot with people that do, you know, mission trips or something like that. They say, you know, I feel like I got more out of it. And it ends up being this spiritual and calming and peaceful thing. Whenever you do acts of service, there's graces in that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so you're saying you get a similar, if not the, the same effect from receiving. But I, I think some of us get caught into that. Maybe it's this uh, the world of independence, right? Mm-hmm. Where I don't I'm a need, charity case. I don't yeah, need anybody right. to do anything right. for me. I can right. do it myself. And so, when somebody does something for us, or gets something for us, or gives something to us, there's almost like a resistance mm-hmm. to that, and we might not get that great. Even if we do accept it, maybe begrudgingly or something like that, we don't feel right. at peace because we're like, well. And I, I'm so glad you that. said that because I used to, if somebody decided to give me a Christmas gift, gifts are not my love language <laughs> yeah, either. Me too. Um, so if somebody gave me a Christmas gift and I had nothing for them, I used to feel like that was the worst thing. Hmm. But now I'm able to say, you know what? They had this idea. I don't want to deprive them of that. Just yeah. be in the joy. Let them experience that. And then I try to think of, I love it when I give somebody a gift and they don't have anything for me because it just seems you know, less as a transaction kind Uh. of thing. So especially as we go into Advent, if we could all spend some time just prayerfully thinking about receptivity, what do I need to be more open to receive what God wants to do in me during this Advent, to receive others' Mm self-gift graciously, Mm -hmm. um, and then return that, whether it be to that same person or to the next person that we encounter, but this this mutual gift of self that we were created for and that ultimately brings about the joy and peace in our world for which we long. Yeah. So basically, it's in giving that we receive, but also in receiving you sound very Franciscan. <laughs> that we receive, and maybe in a way, in receiving that we give. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. That that works. All right. We do. We give others their dignity from receiving what they are giving. Them. All right. Well, I feel like there's even more to unpack here, so maybe this will be continued for our future theology by Thursday. Thank you again, Cindy, for joining us and sharing this with us. Thanks for having me.